challenging. It likes sandy substrates for the most part in this system. So the shoreline emergent. Pretty flower. Have any more questions? Uh, so then look into 2019, the permits that were issued, uh, you know, are probably are going to still be active, if, if I'm understanding that, and the where they're going to be used, so on and so forth, will be a moving target until Doug does his review and so on. Uh, I'm just trying to get a message of where things go in summary, uh, if it can be, at this point of October. So the, the permits for permit applications for 2019 for Huron River Chain of Lakes um, will be welcome in November. Uh, we anticipate seeing them uh, early this year. Uh, we anticipate being able to apply similar analyses that we used in 2018 um, and rendering decisions uh, possibly more quickly because of the experience we've had. Um, that's not to say things will be the same. Uh, the proposal for what areas to be treated may change. Um, the target species may change. Um, so it's not to say that things will be the same from year to year, um, but essentially a practice, a, a, a way to analyze um, has been established and is something to build on going forward. Um, I did want to mention, there was a question in here about um, um, communicating with residents about um, expectations and the need for good weeds in the lake system. Um, one thing I wanted to mention uh, and encourage uh, both lake leadership and all residents to uh, take into consideration is um, the Michigan Shoreland Stewards Program. I think that um, we can go a long way to understanding um, the rationale for Doug's management approach if people understand the role of submerged and emergent floating leaf plant communities in providing ecosystem services. I think um, that that understanding is not widespread and deep enough among our residents, um, uh, Lakeshore residents. Uh, this stewards program allows people to uh, learn techniques themselves for evaluating their shoreland and for getting um, levels of, um, uh, of rewards for maintaining um, shoreland plants. I think it's really important for people to learn the widespread benefits of aquatic plants um, and to cease seeing them only as something that gets in the way of their use of a resource um, and perhaps adjust where that balance falls. Who administers that program? Um, it's a DEQ uh, joint program. Uh, um, I can leave you, I'm going to leave you some of the um, brochures. There is a website. Um, I think this needs to be um, an important place for education um, of lake leadership as well as lake residents. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a complex question about uh, how to manage these um, aquatic plant communities, both the submerged plant community, the floating leaf and emergent plant community. Um, you know, Doug made it clear that just because a non-native species is present doesn't mean it's going to be treated or managed. Um, therefore, you wouldn't expect um, a map of the distribution of non-natives over time to be especially useful. In fact, it could communicate the wrong thing, you know, because over time you may find that Starry Stonewort is going to ring Baseline Lake uh, for the foreseeable future, you know, and, and that is, that might communicate to somebody 
that there's a problem with the management program. Um, it's not. It's the nature of that particular species. It's the nature of how we manage. Um, I think this meeting has shown that um, the decision to treat or to manage uh, with mechanical approaches um, depends on a number of factors, not just whether that species is present, um, but whether it can be treated, whether it can be managed mechanically, uh, whether th there's any point to that. Um, so, you know, understanding, I think, the, the ecology of these systems and understanding the benefit to the lake ecosystem is critical. Um, and this program I recommend very highly because it's um, organized for lake residents. Oh, excuse me, one more program I wanted to mention that brought along this for sure. Um, there's a six-week online course uh, called Introduction to Lakes. Um, it covers lake ecology, shorelines, aquatic plants, um, watersheds. Um, that is something that many um, property owners could benefit from. Just to let you know, we, um, have, uh, we have board members that, and, and, uh, on the board that have been taking And not only system. that, but as an incentive, uh, we, we broadcast it out to our members and so on. If you would like to take that course, we will pay for it, the PBWA. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're really trying to encourage it. That's I'm great. Complete. I'm all in on what that's you're great. saying, and that's kind of what we're doing is, how available are all these brochures? Because we do. We, remember when we did the new Swan program? We sh we, mm -hmm. we send everybody a brochure. Right, right. Swan, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Can um, we get? Um, if you contact Julia Kirkwood, I'm sure she can help you. Julia yep. Kirkwood. Yeah. And so those contacts are on the back of um, this brochure. Okay. That's all right. What's um, You don't even have to write it down. It's listed here. Oh, okay. Right. Because that, that, that'd be an idea for distribution. Yeah. I'm sure we can probably have the funds to encourage yeah. people yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. um, are there uh, Michigan National Resource Stewards, the resource stewards, are they engaged with any of these programs? Those are usually retired DNR recognize. folks. Um, I don't recognize the organization, okay. sorry. Okay. Um, They're usually at the NRC meetings. So. Yeah. All right. Um, now this program, this stewardship program, is a, is a great idea. I mean, uh, one of the things I want to stress within this other organization I'm involved in is education. It's like even from the kids on up, you know, to get our future conservationists engaged, we have to educate them. So the idea that if you guys could put something together for a, a newsletter to describe the communication network and how you know how that is approached, the fact that it's a dynamic program and that it's going to require you know some interim assessment and changing gears and so forth and all that will be available to, to view online. Those are important points you know, so, to, to, because the public is going to be confused. They're always confused because the, the public is scientifically it's complicated. Sciences. Well, they're scientifically ignorant. I mean, basically our, our, you know, if you take a look at math and science education in this country, it's a, it's a I consider a national security issue myself, but, uh, but you know, education is important. So, Absolutely, that's one of the things we're really working hard on, and it's, anyways, just just to summarize and then to ask this question so that, since it is recorded, it's still right. Yeah. Okay, Pat Hole's question as the township supervisor, he goes, I'm very concerned about the public response to assessment of the lake improvement program that or rough when residents receive their December 1st tax bills. Can you give me an update on the permitting process for next year? So, as you mean we kind of summarize you kind of we kind of talked about that but it's, it's kind of following a process right because he's saying this is what I've, I've got to be dealing with folks when they get their tax bills we need to and he'll watch this um, so he knows how to uh, frame his response to, to the to the folks I think so I, I thought I covered yeah, that. I think I, I well, okay, I just want to recap so that past, yeah, I think you know, you'll in, hear I this. Think in final summary, I think, is yeah. we, right. are, we are working ahead of, ahead of schedule right now. Okay. We are planning on having our applications in early. And as it Rachel says, they have... The reports are already there. Yeah. Yeah, right. so, yeah, so everything is great. in process, and we are looking really good for getting things out uh, on time for the 2019 season. So. Uh, our expectation, you know, cautiously optimistic, is that we'll be 
on time and ready to go when we are normally ready to go for application season. So uh, I think that Lisa okay. covered that and she's talked about that and I think like like she said that we've we've done the work before and um, you know there's a process there are some small things that'll be added into it but uh, we're looking good. After five years we probably should you know write up how it worked. <laughs> well I mean, you know this, this is this is a lot of balls to have in here at one time. And we know we learned that this is a horrifically huge project once we got into it. You folks it, yeah, I thought it was simple to pass it. And we understand that and as well as us it's like boy be careful what you ask for when we really pushed for that study and, and got you know up. So anyways Right. And now we're just going to plow ahead and keep dealing with the, the challenges. I, 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 I'm real confident that, uh, you know, prior two years will be history and we're just going to move forward with a good, positive approach. Sounds good. Uh, you can't do anything about the past, just learn from it. You know, the only thing you can do is the present <laughs> and what the future is going to be. Wow. So be present. Let me write that one down. Be present in the moment. Okay. And it's, a, it's a philosophy. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for right. attending today. This was great for information and exchange of ideas and concepts and, and where we're heading and what we're looking forward to next year. So thank you, everyone, for, for being here and, and um, you know, talking about this important topic. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for organizing us. Yeah, yeah that's great, Jonathan. Jonathan, we lost a little bit of the recording. If you want to do just a quick summary. Um, would that be all right if we just went around and do a quick summary? I think it'd be an executive. What was your outcome today? Well, I was made aware of the fact that I kind of already knew that it's, it's a complex, you know, system that we're dealing with. And there's a lot of a lot of wheels that have to, to gear together to make this uh, happen and to also make it adaptive because it has to be an adaptive process. You're dealing with a biological system, so if it's not adaptive, then it's gonna fail. So you can't be rigid about it. So you have to be able to accept variables that had not been anticipated before, and that those have to be communicated clearly. So that, you know, if, if we can get communications, like public, about what goes into the decision-making, both for the permits and for the treatments, and the fact that some treatments are gonna be, ex quote unquote, experimental, you know, in other words, we're going to, have to see if this works. If it does and doesn't, that, that's both results give you something you can act upon. You know, from a scientific standpoint, if people understand that, I think that you know, um, because the scientific aspects of these things are very difficult to communicate to, to the vast majority of the public, and I think just openness and the transparency of that mechanism by which decisions are made and how they can be made on the fly, which is acceptable because you're going to find something new every time you go out there. I think that's important for people to understand because, you know, some people are linear thinkers, some people are red thinkers, and linear folks, which the vast majority of the public is when it comes to scientific things, they always want, I want an answer, you know. Well, there's not necessarily an answer. Maybe there's a framework that we have to understand, and that framework that when these decisions are being made in has to be clearly communicated or you're going to lose the public. So that's basically what I took out of this. Boy, you covered a lot of what I was going to say. <laughs> no, I, I, I just hope that people understand that uh, this has got to be one of the premier management programs, um, I would say, in the country. And again, I work throughout the United States, just returned from the Florida Aquatic Plant Management Society meetings. And I hope people understand that despite the issues that have come up, that they also recognize that uh, we dealt with it. And we got through some issues that I don't know that they can brag about that in some other states that face the same kinds of challenges. So I hope people understand that, we, you know, we've got a great group of people on board. We've um, great cooperation from the state with the county. Our contractors are absolutely top notch, and I'm just honored to be a part of the program. Uh, these lake, this is a jewel of a lake system. That's the other thing people need to recognize. It is gorgeous, and if I feel honored. To work with these people, I'm also honored to have the opportunity to work on such a beautiful system. It's extremely varied. Uh, I work with um, uh, chemical companies that are out there and some uh, biological companies. And given the variability that we have, you're going to see a lot of that kind of testing here mm -hmm. because there's so many different habitats where we can evaluate new and better strategies for the management of these issues. So um, look towards that and, and really it. it uh, says what you were saying, Greg. This we have an adaptive management program, 
we look forward to being out there in the spring and looking at what the challenges will be for 2019 and developing the best possible strategy that we can within the context of the re regulatory concerns and within the context of what technology is available to us. We didn't address a lot of that, but there's constraints with technologies too, but we will put the best kind of program we can together and uh, create a stable, biologically diverse ecosystem that will also satisfy the expectations of most recreational users, not all, but certainly most, and uh, for the further success in that area. I'm going to remember the flu vaccine, you know, analogy, uh -huh. because that's basically what this is like. You're trying to project what next year's situation is going to be when you apply now, and that's going to change before you get there. Mm -hmm. So. I'm just um, reminded again of the um, challenge of uh, the complexity of the issues involved with this project. Um, it's a, a very big communication um, challenge and I'm impressed with the ways that uh, people have been communicating uh, this website um, and the kind of uh, communications you send out by, um, by email, listserv. Um, is also, I think, a model for communicating um, about this kind of project. It puts a lot on like leadership members and on the public to be informed, but the opportunity to be informed is, is there, and that's very impressive. Um, and certainly, you know, our program would want to be supportive of uh, good communication because it is a complex project. And um, sometimes there are um, concepts that aren't what your intuition would, um, you know, would conclude. And so, you know, those those interesting um, conceptual challenges, the um, you know the non non intuitive decisions about treatment, um, all of that um, I think uh, can be communicated and. For those who want to be informed, uh, uh, they can they can get as con they can get into as much of the detail as they like. It appears to me, um, and so I really encourage us to continue with the with the communication. Great. Uh, my summary will be just pretty much directed uh, to the to the lake owners, the the participants, and the SAD, and so on. I really, at this point, I feel that the, the prior two years is something we should all look at as a tremendous learning experience. This was a huge project, um, and I think that everybody needs to understand that And as a homeowner. Um, going forward, I, I have uh, high comfort that you know, this program is, is finding good traction right now. And uh, because of the diverse, diversity of the, the seven lakes and so on in the river system, more than likely it'll be an ongoing process beyond the five years, whether or not Washoe County wants to you know, you know, continue well, on, but that remains to be seen. But I think County. that essentially once we get through, you know, once we got through the prior two years, yes, there's going to be challenges in 19 that we just don't 